Hello and welcome to 100k Side Hustle. I'm CR Caldwell. We're going to learn how to make an Amazon ad today, your first ad. I'm assuming that people watching this are beginners or maybe kind of early intermediate needing a refresher or something like that. We're going to go, th go through some really basic steps. So in this, I assume you have an Amazon Merch On Demand account and you've listed some products. You'll need to obviously have products live on Amazon in order to advertise them. Thirdly, you'll need to have been accepted to the advertisers program. So you'll get an email about that with some information when you're they're ready to accept people. And um, there's some literature on the website about that. I've kind of highlighted here. Um, and you will have to have a payment method on there as well for merch people. You'll have to have a credit card or something like that for uh, payment of your advertising fees or the cost of the advertising. And the fifth item here, we're going to create a sponsored ad. So let's just do a walkthrough on what that looks like. The first type of ad we're going to create is an automatic campaign ad. So just the most basic kind of ad. Amazon's going to do the work for us. We just need to choose the product and kind of figure out how much we're willing to spend and how much we're, how much we're willing to budget for that, right? So first of all, you're going to need to get an ASIN from one of your shirts, which is sort of like a, a serial number for a shirt or something like that. And there are lots of tools that people use um, to gather this data as well as other statistics and metrics and stuff. So there are Chrome extensions and different software out there that do this, but it's also on the product page. Just scroll down to the product details and you can copy and paste it right there. So, you know, we can copy this. This is not my product. This is just the literally the first search item that came up when I like typed in some like merch shirt search terms. Um, next, we're going to create a new campaign. And so you'll go to the Amazon uh, advertising page, which is advertising.amazon.com. And we're going to create a sponsored product. Don't worry about the other ones right now. They may or may not be useful to you later and click continue on sponsored product and we're going to already have our ASIN ready either on a like a page in another tab or copy it or something like that we're going to want to give it a good name and in this um, example we're creating it's just going to be one ASIN one product in the campaign that's it so the ad group name can be the same as the campaign name and we'll get to all of that so give it a name that makes sense that's useful to you so it could be like the description of the shirt or the name of the shirt something that's you know not too long and maybe the ASIN somewhere in there as well and then like um, what you're targeting like some targeting information this may not be super clear to you right now but we'll kind of go over some of that now or more depth than a in a later video if you do use um seller central you'll probably have more options here but if you don't then you'll just want to go to all amazon products in any event we'll add a product i'm not adding this because i don't know whose shirt this is i literally just came up in the search term and obviously we don't want to advertise someone else's shirt and we would add this and it would show up here and it's defaulted to automatic targeting we don't need to change the targeting at all for this example this is the most important part next okay under automatic targeting we have bids showing up here do not leave this as the amazon default bid don't really don't ever do what amazon suggests as the bid unless you know that's really what you want to do because it they're not necessarily acting in your best interest and they don't necessarily know what a good bid for you is it will almost always be too much unless there's a specific reason why you need to have a higher bid uh, and later on some of those reasons will be will make a lot of sense but right now this bid really low it could be two cents it could be 10 cents um, we're going to start with a 10 cent bid right now and see if that works for us all of this negative keywording keyword targeting stuff uh, we'll talk about this another time, so just skip all of it, okay? And this is moderately important. Don't worry too much about it. Just select down. Mainly, we don't want Amazon to be like jacking up our bids uh, on their own um, because they think it will increase visibility or, or get more clicks or something like that, right? So down only, they can decrease the bid uh, dynamically, but they're not going to jack it up, um, you know, up to 100%. 
and next there's just the very lot the very bottom settings and i would just in this case because we're kind of creating a super simple setup simplest setup for you guys just copy and paste that title in many cases we'll have different information there but you'd also have a portfolio in lots of cases so you can group your ads by niche for example and finally you've got the budget down here this is far less important for you than the bids the bids that's like 80 percent of what matters first pick out a good product that you think like the, the one that you like the most maybe maybe it's got a, a review or it's sold before or whatever you know it's just something you think has potential to pick to choose for your first ad and then put a small budget in here this doesn't really matter very much when i was starting out i basically never used the daily budget you're you might be struggling to get clicks when you start out so never mind spending your whole budget i do it sometimes now but um, that's because I'm aggressively targeting a niche or a keyword or something like that. There are reasons for it. Something suddenly goes viral or it's a trending topic. Not just because I made some random automatic ad um, and set a low bid. You know, it's very, very unlikely that you're ever going to just burn through your budget. So if someone says, you know, like set this to 25 or $50 or something like that, like... People do that all the time, but it's, it's not going to make a difference. It's not what you're looking at for how to save money. The bid is what is going to determine like 90% of the determining factor for how much you're going to spend. Okay. So that's why we've got this as low bid to start. It's the most important factor. Finally, we're going to launch this and then it will show up in just the list of our live ads. I'm not going to show you all my ads because obviously it's too much information for you know the sleuths out there and launch that campaign and that's all you'd have to do you'd have a live automatic ad now and after that it's a matter of monitoring it so after a couple of days a week you, know, you can you can monitor it every day every hour if you want to you're going to want to look at things like is it getting impressions so is amazon actually serving this ad is it showing it to people is it showing up for certain keywords is it showing up on other people's product pages anything like that depending on how you set up the ad and if not then that might be a reason to go in and edit that ad and increase the default bid a little bit when you're increasing a bid generally or decreasing it as well of course you'll want to do it in very small increments most of the time unless you really know what you're doing so maybe you would go from um 10 up to 12 cents and for some people when they're doing their first ad maybe they're doing a seven and watch the decimal point a seven cent ad and they're gonna boost it up to nine if they're not getting impressions and then up to like 10 or eventually to 15 who knows right and then when you start getting impressions you'll start to get clicks and when you start to get clicks you'll you will or you won't get conversions and that's kind of the nuts and the bolts of the most basic part of running an Amazon ad. You know, there are cases where you're increasing your budget, but again, those are specific cases where, you know, your, your ad is converting or you're trying to target keywords or something like that, that aren't going to apply to the situation in your first ad or your first few ads. Um, after that, you know, the next things that will matter, would be creating things called manual campaigns where we have a lot more control over the data where we understand the niche and we understand the keywords that are in that niche and basically we have a list of keywords and we're going to create campaigns around that with bids for each keyword and trying to rank for these keywords so that our shirt our shirt can eventually get a better and better bestseller rank because when people search for those keywords they see our shirt ranked highly and kind of there are a lot of strategies around that that are not within this video we get some of that data though from these automatic campaigns so when people click and then they buy something from the automatic campaign we can see the search terms in the data in the advertising console here when we go in here to the live ad we'll be able to see graphs and we'll be able to see data um, like here's a graph that could be from um, a, a campaign or an ad group or something like that. Well, let's just get rid of this right here. 
and get rid of that. So we could see many metrics like conversion um, type metrics, like the amount of clicks you have and the amount of orders that you have, the amount of impressions that you have, and we can figure out everything, the nuts and bolts of how it's working. One of the big metrics that people like to look at is something called ACOS, A-C-O-S, that's advertising cost of sales. And that's one of the big metrics people like to use to determine if their ad is working. That may or may not be the best advice, but it's something you'll probably want to look at when you're starting off. Just one quick example for you, if you have a $20 shirt, say $19.99 list price, and you spend um, $2 to get a sale, that's a 10% ACoS, 10% of the, the list price in order to get a sale. And if it were, um, say, $4, that's a 20% ACoS. Of course, on your standard $19.99 standard t-shirt, it's something like, I don't know, $4.68 royalty. I don't remember exactly because they just changed it. So you'd be in the positive, you'd be making a small profit, a net gain on that. But of course, if you went much above 20%, then you'd be at break even, and then you'd be at a losing kind of situation. For a lot of people though, they're not necessarily looking at that right when they're starting out. They're trying to learn about it. And then they might also later on when they're advanced, be aggressively targeting a keyword or a niche or a competitor and even running ads at break even or at a loss for a very long time or as their typical strategy so that their listing and their rank for keywords skyrockets above their competition and they take the traffic that comes to Amazon and they get the lion's share of the sales eventually. There are many strategies around that. When you're starting out though, the most important thing is controlling your bid price controlling how much you spend while you learn how it works. You'll see at the beginning, when I was learning, um, I ran very cheap ads and eventually they started to convert a little bit. I didn't really know what I was doing and I wasn't focusing on it very much because I was getting a lot of organic sales at the time. You know, ads didn't really seem as necessary and they've become much more necessary these days. But, and before I knew what was happening, I wasn't doing very much. And then I started to get sales as I increased uh, the number of listings that I had and the number of uh, like um, and the, the like the bid price and, and some of these metrics right so I started to bid more competitively uh, for the keywords the keyword phrases that I wanted to target for the niches that I was in and as you can see as I increased that it sky it, it went up and up um, certainly not skyrocketing but it stayed um, cost effective the whole time I would say that all throughout this, I could have increased my bid price more because I had ACOS despair, you know? Like if I end up with a 10% or a 14% ACOS, well, I could bid more and bid more aggressively and spend more in order to help my listings get more visibility and still make money and get more organic traffic. So as you learn, you'll start to get kind of uh, more courageous, kind of more informed about how you make these decisions. When you start out though, just be sensible and bid small, okay? So that's kind of the main nuts and bolts there. And kind of one more thing that I'll tell you guys before we go as kind of um, tips go. So one of the things that you might look at eventually is kind of how to optimize things. So eventually you learn about how to add negative keywords so like if you get 50 clicks for a keyword and no one ever buys for that keyword in, in a manual campaign then you'd probably add that keyword as a negative keyword like it's people are clicking it but they're never buying it for it right um, and then you'll learn how to do stuff like that we'll talk about it maybe in later videos though and you'll learn how to get all of the data pretty early on from your auto campaigns and from your um, Amazon account um, to get your search term data and get some of the other data that's going to help you make informed decisions like competitor data and stuff like that. And there are, there are lots of tools around that. Um, I use the free productor extension to, to collect my ASINs and make list campaigns. And there are spreadsheets um, for bulk operations to quickly make changes and, and list stuff as well. So we'll probably talk about that later. Um, there are also what's called lottery campaigns that people do just to give you guys a couple of um, 
overview items that we're not going to talk about today. So some people might list like 50 ASINs and make uh, like many, many listings end up in one automatic ad. Maybe that's one niche. Maybe it's just new listings. Everyone does this differently. And they hope that like something pops off and something kind of picks up like kind of like winning the lottery. And then they can take those items out and build campaigns around them, you know, presumably that where they can gather um, detailed granular data about it and effectively target those kind of keywords and stuff. So we'll talk a lot more in future videos about how you would structure campaigns as well for like um, manual campaigns, because there's a lot of different ways. And this is the type of things where, where people will like get info overload. So I don't want to talk about it too much today. The first thing you just want to worry about is making an auto campaign um, because the way that people will make, you know, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars from Amazon ads. And trust me, they do. It's by not only having a big budget, but knowing how to structure your campaigns in really effective ways, target keywords and basically get high rank in all these keywords and get your the best seller rank for your listing um, at the top, essentially as high as it can go. Um, and then there are a lot of other optimizations, how to, how to figure out when something's not working for you, how to cut your losses there, um, and then how to figure out what is working and how to double down in those areas. That's all I'm going to talk about today. And please ask me questions about this and I can do fil uh, future follow-up videos or shorts around those things. And, you know, I'll kind of go between some of these different print on demand topics. But one of them that I would like to talk about that I think a lot about is ads. So hopefully this has been uh, helpful for you today and you can subscribe if you want uh, more of this type of information. I've got about my first hundred videos planned out. And I know a lot more will pop up along the way based on your guys' questions. Thanks again for watching.